and um, that then then we had to get penalties to get back into the game. And that VAR check, and obviously when you're in the stadium, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what they're checking. You don't know what's going on. And it took him a good six, ten, six, seven minutes to check a VAR, to check for VAR. Yes, there's a lot to check um, for the VAR, but that took way too long. That took way too long to do that. And they got to the right, they got to the right decision, but that took way too long. Um, but Gordon took away the penalty. We, did, we struggled. I didn't know who was going to take that penalty. I really didn't know who was going to take it. Uh, but Gordon nearly saved at the keeper, but it was a good penalty straight into the bottom right corner. And we're back into the game 1-1. Uh, but what, what does it take us to concede yet again? Uh, Dan Byrne, I think it's Dan Byrne and someone else holding off Semenyo, just not even getting close to him, allowing Semenyo the time to pick his spot and shoot. And look, what happens when you take when you get a player like Semenyo to take his time, pick a spot? They're going to score. And that's exactly what happened. Dubravka couldn't do anything about that. Straight into the corner. Mainly Dan Byrne, so I can't remember who else is, uh, it was. But poor, poor defending for that second goal. And yet again, we're behind and we have to chase again. And then the second goal... Matt Ritchie was up for it. Um, obviously, came on 90th minute. Him and Joe White came on. Joe White was brilliant in my opinion. I think I feel I think Joe White did really really well. Provided some good energy on the field. Uh, but Matt Ritchie cross came in from Bruno. Um, Matt Ritchie headed straight into the keeper, but the keeper rebounded it. And Matt Ritchie got, got lucky, lucky, lucky. He got lucky that he fell straight to his feet. Uh, but who cares? Them goals, they all count. Uh, and that was 2-2 and then that was 91st minute with 9 minutes left we thought we could possibly get a winner in that game we were wrong but we should have we had plenty more chances to get a winner so did Bournemouth to be fair Bournemouth had loads of opportunities in that last 9 minutes to possibly get a winner uh, but yeah that is really the game in a nutshell everyone uh, obviously this is just an instant reaction raw from the game I will do my full live match review tomorrow night on, on this channel one, so please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified whenever we post a video or go live as well. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you um, when we play Arsenal. That's going to be an interesting game, everyone. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. How are the lads? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video on the Toon TV YouTube channel, everyone. And this is the match review, well, instant review to the uh, Newcastle 2, oh, Bournemouth 2. Uh, that game just, just happened at St James Park. Obviously, I didn't do a watch along. I was at the game today. Um, it would have been an interesting watch along if I actually did one because uh, it was a very interesting game. It was very back to forth. It wasn't n n neither team really controlled possession. Uh, but just before we get into that, everyone, please make sure you can subscribe to the channel, of course, and also please like the video if you do enjoy, as it obviously helps YouTube boost me up into the recommendations for everyone to watch the channel, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Socials will be down in the description as well, everyone. Thank you so much for support. Right, let's get into the uh, review then. So, Bournemouth. I always knew this was, this was going to be a really tough game. I always knew it was, because Bournemouth are not a team to be messed around with. They've got really dangerous players like Semenyo, Solanke, um, Cliver, um, Tavernier, they got really, really good players and it really showed today. Um, the amount of times they went forward, they were shooting and they got two goals out of it and we had to get a penalty to really get back into the game. But first half, let's, let's go half by half. First half, we were dreadful. First half, we were not good enough. Didn't shoot enough, tried to put the ball in the back of the net. Barnes, invisible. Miggy, Miggy as usual, not very good at all. Gordon trying his best, but he's just not really got many options up there today. Barnes wasn't at his best, um, although Barnes is probably trying to get back to full fitness, back to game, getting more game time under his belt. Miggy was just useless. He was ridiculously bad today. So, so bad. Midfield, however, Longstaff. It's becoming recurring for Longstaff now. Every single game, he just does the Longstaff thing and just hangs around, get, gets the ball every now and then, delivers a few nice balls, might score a goal. Apart from that, he don't offer that much really. Bruno didn't have his game today. Bruno was not um, was not he wasn't on his game today. Let's be honest, everyone, he was not on his game. Uh, but Miley, however, Miley, you were sensational today. Miley was standing above the rest of them in that midfield, uh, even Bruno, which is not which is unheard of because Bruno is the one that mentors the likes of Miley's and he's a very experienced midfielder. But Miley was outperforming everyone in that midfield today. Um, defense Dan Burn yet again. I don't. I don't want to be a Dan Burn hater, but Tino has to start. He has to start at least next game against Arsenal. I, I think if Dan Burns going up against Bakaro Saka against Arsenal at the Emirates, he's going to get torn to shreds. He really. We, we say it's every single game, 
But Semenya had him on toast today. He really did. The, the only time Dan Byrne could cope with Semenya was when he had the ball, when he was not running and he could literally just tackle him with one foot. He wasn't good enough from Dan Byrne and it took Eddie out, what, 70 minutes to bring Tino on. And the impact Tino made was ridiculously good. It was so immense uh, in that game. Tino was, it just provided that pace on the left-hand side for Anthony Gordon as well. It was brilliant. Uh, obviously no goals in that first half of course um, Bournemouth I mean Dubravka was brilliant apart from that he couldn't have anything about that that first goal he slips it happens in football we have to move on uh, it happens but it's annoying that that sort of goal goes in um, but Dubravka the, the saves he made in that first half were just ridiculous they were so good them saves and obviously most of us in the stadium thought that thought that was in most of them shots were in but they weren't Dubravka was up for it and Dubravka he did brilliant today he did brilliant he couldn't do anything about that first goal uh, apart from that I don't think he did much wrong really um, obviously then obviously Bournemouth went 1-0 up from that Dubravka mistake uh, slipped over can't do anything about it as I've just